Hello everyone, Jama Malmi here. Today I'm creating a scrapbook layout with the beautiful Daisy Daisy collection. You can see all of the papers and sticker sheet here. I am a sucker for green, so I'm loving this collection and it goes perfectly with this green shirt that I'm wearing here in this photo. I thought that it matched that paper perfectly. So we're definitely gonna be using that as a heavy accent. This photo actually comes from one of the thumbnails here on YouTube, and I'm gonna talk about why I'm documenting that here in just a moment. I wanted to give you a close-up look at the sticker sheet and papers. There's some really good title options on the sticker sheet, and I really like this subtle pattern of the pink and then the stripe is a great way to bring in all of the colors from the pack. There is a lot of green in this pack and I do like green, but if you're not a big green fan, you can use the other sides of the paper or um, you know, scrapbook St. Patrick's Day photos. I really like this little daisy print and then this is the one I'm gonna be using today as the border around my layout. There's also these dies available and they layer up and I absolutely love these dies. In fact, they sold out really, really quickly. They're back in stock now, but I really think they're going to sell out again. So if you like them, then be sure to grab them quickly. There is a workshop available for the Daisy Daisy collection to create scrapbook layouts and cards. And I'm just scrolling through there real quick so you can see that there's cutting dimensions and everything. And that is available right on my website on the Daisy Daisy page, which will be linked in the description. So this is going to be my background um, border and I want it to be a fairly thick border because I want it to really um, bring out that shirt in the photo. So I'm going to gut it with about, I think I'm doing about a one and a half inch border and I'm going to have about one inch showing all the way around. But I definitely didn't want to waste any of this beautiful paper so I will save this little piece for later on. And now I'm going to line this up on my Versamount. I'm going to tape it down because I don't want it to move while I put that center section on. So this will hold it in place and then I can use the grid lines on my Versamount to line up this piece here. I've already matted this here. The black piece is 10 by 10 and the white piece is 9 and 3 quarters by 9 and 3 quarters to leave just a small eighth inch border. I thought it really needed that thin black border to help ground that white piece in the middle. And then I'm going to decide on my matte color. I already have a thin black matte around my photo to mimic that black matte on the background. And then I tried out Flamingo after having the ballerina and I liked that darker flamingo pink better. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out. I think it pops a little bit more. And I've already got all of my daisy pieces cut out. So for each daisy, I'm doing the one background piece, the one piece that has a little slit cut out, and then the, the flower center. And I'm gonna use this light pink pattern in the middle, just like the layout in the guide showed. So I'm sort of following the guide layout, but I changed up the colors and I changed up quite a few elements, but I really, really liked it and I wanted to use it as my inspiration. So if you wanna follow along with that, it's in that guide that I mentioned. I then pulled out some leaves that I cut with my layered flowers dies. I absolutely love that die set. I've used it a lots of times. And I thought that these daisies needed just a little leaf to bring some pops of green around the page. So I added that. And then a lot of people have been um, layering these daisies so that the petals sit in, in between the petals when you layer them. And I didn't want them to be that heavy of a flower. I wanted to line them up a little bit more so I'm going to spin it around because there is a way that it has to go. Um, so it is easier if you have the petals go in between the petals but if you line it up you need to make sure that you find the petals that line up and it just gives that more of a light and airy not so heavy look. So I got all of those lined up and then I pulled out this paperboard sheet. These are some shapes from the It's the Little Things collection. I've done a couple of layouts with that so far and I had a few pieces left. I really liked these butterflies and I thought that they went well with this page. So I'm adding some of those in a visual triangle around the page and then I have that little arrow in the top that says yay 
bouquet. And I also have all of these little flower centers cut out in the same colors. So I'm using Flamingo Ballerina and White Daisy. And so I have those same colors cut out of the centers, but I'm just alternating them so that they are different color centers on each flower. So my title is going to be Shine Bright and I was showing you that I'm actually putting the S down upside down on purpose because I liked the way that it looked better. So I did that and my title says Shine Bright because I'm documenting my YouTube journey. This photo is what I used in the thumbnail for my very first layout share video. Now I had done process videos for quite some time but then in 2021 I decided to do a share of all of the layouts that I had been doing recently and some that I was putting away in albums and that video is one of the most viewed videos here on my channel so it really helped me decide that I'm going to focus on scrapbooking because prior to that I was also making cards on my channel but it really showed me that you guys want to see layouts and I really enjoy doing layouts and so I decided to focus on that on my channel. So I really wanted to document this and had been meaning to for a while so I'm thankful that the perfect paper came along so I could do so and I'm just so thankful for this crafty community and for this outlet that I have here on YouTube because I just really really love sharing my ideas with you guys and I love creating videos so thanks for being here. All right, so I fussed with that title quite a bit, got it just right, and now I'm gonna fuss with all of the butterflies and all of these other little elements around the page. I decide, I'm pointing out there that I'm gonna do my journaling in the middle. I thought that I was gonna do some strip journaling and I wasn't liking the placement of the butterflies anyway. It was forming more of a line with all of those pops of black rather than a visual triangle and drawing your eye around the page. So I wanted to show you how I am going to strategically glue all of this down now that I have it just in the right place. I don't always show my gluing process and I'm not gonna show the whole thing, but I just wanted to show that I typically kind of lift up a piece of it and then put some glue under and then stick it down so it's not moving around a whole lot. Now these banners, I didn't want to hang like I didn't want them to show from behind those petals so I just cut them at an angle and I'm cutting them so that they're kind of uh, angled with the petals and sort of camouflaged there so you're not seeing like a blunt edge sticking out and then I thought that I needed to add a little bit of ink around those banners so that they would pop a little more so I grabbed my flamingo ink which is the color of the darker pink in the layout and I'm just going around the edge very lightly with my sponge dauber to make that pop and then I'm going to also put that up on some thin 3d foam but I'm just putting the outside edges on 3d foam because I have the other side tucked under the flower so I wanted it to kind of lift at the end but then it's tucked under the flower on the other side so we'll get that down and then I'm going to go ahead and get all of those other flowers glued down off camera and do the finishing touches. Before I start with the sequins, I decided to add some clear shimmer brush to those flower centers. So I shook it just a little bit to get all of the glitter uh, mixed up in there and then I'm lightly brushing it on the flower centers. Unfortunately, it's really hard to see and even in um, when I bring it up to the camera at the end, it's gonna be hard to see, but I do have some still shots on Instagram and Facebook and those show the, the shimmer a little bit better. So first I was pulling out all of the iridescent colors in here, but once I got all of those down around the page, I thought that it was competing too much with the other colors on the page because it was giving more of a blue purple hue than um, the more like pinkish hue that sometimes iridescent has. So I got them all down and then I decided that I'm going to go around and switch them all out with some white and dull silver. And I think that that looks a lot better. It doesn't compete with all of the other colors quite so much. So I'm just going to get them down in all the same places and then I'm going to use my micro glue dots to 
to get them down. Now sometimes I use my liquid glue, sometimes I use these micro glue dots. I was in a micro glue dot mood, so that's what I did. These are like little itty bitty tiny glue dots. I love them. So they fit for the sequins as well as any other little tiny embellishments you might have. So here is a close-up look at all those details. I'm trying to show you the shimmer, but it's just not catching. But you can see all of the other detail. And then I used the journal strip stickers to do my journaling in the center there. And I just had it come right out of the photo. Be sure to hit the like button if you were inspired by this video and click the video on screen to watch my first layout share. Thanks and have a great day.